walked into the office, eagerly anticipating my meeting with the assistant to the assistant superintendent of business affairs. I was giddy with excitement, my mind envisioning all of the changes I would make with my huge school budget. He started by congratulating me on my position as the new principal of the Knight Alternative High School. And before I could respond, he said to me that I really didn't have a school budget. I had a budget for office supplies only. You have about $1,500, he said. And with a chuckle, he added, but that's enough for a bulletproof vest. And then he laughed a little harder. But when he realized I was not laughing with him, he cleared his throat and reminded me in more serious and hushed tones, you don't have a school budget, Mrs. Bradley, because you don't have a school. You have a program. But you really don't need that much money for those kids anyway, right? Right, I thought. And then I simply said thank you and left his office, my eyes fixed on the floor beneath me as if each step were placed on delicate, crackling ice. My first staff meeting as the new principal of the night school, I called a professional gathering. Because one, most teachers hate the words professional development. And two, because I wanted it to truly be a gathering of professional minds. I opened, funny enough, with a TED Talk by Rita F. Pearson. Every kid needs a champion. In it, Ms. Pearson shares a heartwarming anecdote of how she built relationships with her students by becoming their personal champion celebrating their successes, both great and small. I thought it appropriate for the moment. I wanted to begin by humanizing my students as children, or at the very least, students. You see, prior to becoming the principal of this night school, I had taught there for two years, and the discourse around night schools and their students had not changed. So, in spite of what I had been told about my program, I introduced my vision of my school. I stated emphatically to my staff, despite what you have heard or think, this is a school. It is not the precursor to the juvenile detention center. It is not baby jail. And it is not the land of the misfit toys. It is a school. And these students are not criminals or throwaways or the forgotten ones. Let me tell you who they really are. I have four parents under the age of 20. The young father has a full-time job during the day, as does one of the young mothers. The other two are home with their babies during the day, and their working parents are their babysitters while they attend classes in the evening. I have at least four students who suffer from some form of social anxiety and find it too difficult to function in the one school building that serves over 2,300 students from 7 a.m to 2.30 p.m. I have students who understand that at 19 or 20 years old, this is their last option because they cannot see themselves holding a full-time job and sitting in classes with 14-year-olds. And they all were excessively absent from school. Now, I do have a few students who fit the common stereotype for example, I have a student who was previously incarcerated and could not see himself assimilating back into a traditional high school environment at 19 with less than five credits. And although we never seek confirmation, I am pretty sure I have students who are affiliated with, well, let's just say they belong to some questionable social families. <laughs> And I have students who came to me because they were caught self-medicating their undiagnosed psychological disorders <laughs> frequently on school grounds. And I have students who were suspended from the day school for fighting or other infractions so many times that, well, they've worn out their welcomes in the day school. <laughs> However, what is unique to my program, and I don't know of any other alternative school designed this way, but I am also responsible for every student who is suspended from the middle schools and the high school for as little as one day 
to as much as an entire year for gross violations of the school's code of conduct. So while I am trying to run a school, I am also trying to rehabilitate. And I am expected to do all of this in a building that is literally one floor, one hallway, and six classrooms. Space that is shared with offices during the day, oh yeah, and a $1,500 budget for office supplies. Now, for most people, the discourse around night schools is that any student who attends a night school, either by choice or by referral, is a bad student. They are troubled, they are troublemakers, they are too difficult to handle, they are lost causes. And they do not belong in the same building with the good kids. So, how can the discourse change? It will always remain the same if the attitude is out of sight, out of mind. When I was a night school teacher, I worked very hard to make sure that my students did not accept the labels that were being placed upon them. So when I took over the program three years ago as the principal, one of my primary objectives was to change the discourse and change the objective. At that same professional gathering, I gave my inherited staff the analogy of new shoes. You go to the store, you buy new shoes. Try them on, you walk around on the carpet, and they feel great. So you take them home. But when you put those shoes on at home, they feel a little tighter than they did in the store. And you have to decide in that moment, will you keep the shoes and walk through the tightness until you break them in? Or will you take them off, put them back in the box without scuffing the soles, and return them for a different pair of new shoes? Well, as the new principal of this night school program, I have just purchased a pair of new shoes. And as my team, you are all wearing new shoes. And they are a little tighter than we anticipated. And if you keep them on, they will surely become uncomfortable at times. So you have to decide in this moment, will you keep the shoes and walk through the tightness until you break them in? Or will you take them off and search out a different pair of new shoes? Well, three years later, I have had to ask the same question every year. Only about 10% of my original staff remains. Those who bought into the original discourse decided they needed a different pair of new shoes. And those who remain wore those new shoes and broke them in. And I am so very grateful to them. What I believe to be the most important and perhaps the most difficult directive I give my team has become my personal and professional mantra. Seek first to understand. Now, I do not see my students through rose-colored glasses, but I see them, receive them, accept them, and meet them right where they are. And I seek to understand the stories they carry with them before making a judgment about who they are or who they pretend to be. I warn my staff and anyone who interacts with them that 99% of them walk around with a chip on their shoulders. They see authority figures, particularly those in uniform, as the enemy. They are naturally defensive and oppositional, and they do not believe in themselves. So they do not believe that anyone else would or could believe in them. So before you take their language, their behavior, or their attitudes personally, seek first to understand where they are coming from. Not necessarily in their lives, but just in that moment. And that is where we begin every year, every month, every week, every day, every moment that we interact with our students. 
It has not been perfect, and it has not been easy. But we are on a forward trajectory, and we continue to push. One of our greatest accomplishments is changing the attitude and the perception of our students. They have accepted that they attend school, not just a program. They have accepted that their teachers expect them to do their best, to try to give it their best shot, and will hold them accountable for their own successes. They have witnessed their peers walk across the stage at graduation, all 500 of those seniors at the day school, and they believe that they will too. Attendance is still a great concern. But we've ins instituted incentives to reward good attendance. We now go on trips. Yes, we actually take them out of the school building and into the general public. <laughs> This year, we were fortunate enough to be invited to tour a college in Brooklyn. And it was a pivotal moment for me as much as it was for them. Because prior to that moment, I did not think that my students were even interested in college. It turns out they are interested. They just needed someone to reassure them that it is possible for them. We've gone bowling, hosted our own career fair, and even partnered with another alternative school to play competitive basketball. And this year, for the first time, our school will be featured with its own page in the high school yearbook. Listen, I don't have all of the answers. And because my school is only a program on paper, I certainly don't have the resources to create even small miracles. But what I do have is a team of staff members who see my students as human beings, who sometimes march to their own tunes and beat their own drums. I have a team who believes in building genuine relationships with spirits that have been beaten, abused, and discouraged. And I have a team who understands that when you have tried the same thing a thousand times with the same results, you must try something different. Rita Pearson is one of my heroes. She challenged me to be a champion for young people. And I strive to live up to that challenge every day, both as a teacher during the day and a principal at night. I take it personally when people speak negatively about any of my students, and I'm quick to have a conversation with anyone who tries to stereotype them. Because I was an honor student who was excessively absent from school, who became an alternative school student. I actually went to day school and night school concurrently so that I could graduate on time. I lived through the low expectations, cynical stares, and skeptical whispers of teachers who saw me as troubled and at risk. And here I am. So today, I challenge you to do what I demand of my team. Seek first to understand, and then you too will know who we really are. Thank you. <laughs>